Ça va? Hello, hello. Voilà. How are you, my friend? So, actually, can we set the background? No, I don't think so. No. Yeah. Can't it doesn't, see. doesn't matter. So good. It's better this way. I don't know if I'm sharing my screen. I'm supposed to. Yep. C'est bien avec des, des, des photos de chats, d'animaux, c'est toujours accrocheur. <rire> Tout le monde aime les chats, voyons. Tout à fait. Alors, on n'est pas tout seul, il y a des, des gens qui arrivent. Bonjour à toutes, à tous. Hi, bonjour. Laurent. Bonjour, bonjour. Hello. Du coup, euh, Nico, je te laisse partager l'écran jusqu'à la démo. Yep. Yep. Je pense que tu veux tester le, ton portage d'écran ou c'est bon On l'a déjà fait. Euh, donc, j'essaie de, de partager mon écran dans ce cas-là. Yep. Surtout euh, quand je, je switch d'écran, tu me dis si tu vas bien. Yep. Ouais. Et quand je bon. fais ça, et quand je fais ça, c'est bon. Même si. Très bien. Ah, je vois des noms connus apparaître euh, dans la liste des gens qui arrivent. Salut. Très bien. <rire> Donc, du coup, ah, j'arrête. Je te, je te laisse la main. Yes, je rebascule là, mon écran. Attends, je vois pas bien mon nom. Quel est ton beau t-shirt là Ah ouais Toi, t'as de la chance, t'as un t-shirt collector. Celui-là, ouais. Ouais, ouais. Uh, I would like to start at 40 or 45 to get the time to the people to join. Yeah, let's make a trade off at 43. <laughs> I'm just afraid that is content. So. Okay. okay. So for everyone, we'll start. Yeah. 33. <laughs> 43.
Haha, <laughs> kids. Yeah, there. Hi from Melissa. So many people we, we know from, from our previous experiences. <laughs> Ciao, Marcello. Okay, so let's start. Okay, let's start. 3.43, right on time. Kit, could you hear me? Could you see my screen? Yes. No more cats? Oh, good. No more fancy no. cats? No? Okay. Yeah, they're just, just two right screen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so hello everyone. Thank you for joining us for this session and very glad and happy to uh, be with you today and to co-host this session with my friend and co and i hope this session will be uh, interesting for you we would like to be as interactive as possible so please use the chat we have two so uh, we will take all the questions and, and uh, try to answer all of those uh, maybe just a few words about uh, both of your co-hosts today uh, as an introduction, get to know more about us. Uh, so, um, Nicolas, I will, I will start. Sorry, Kate, I will be selfish. I will start by myself. No worry. <laughs> so, I've been in, in the API landscape for uh, several years uh, now, starting from the technical stuff, stuff as a developer and, and, and w building some front end mobile apps and web apps, and then wondering how those experiences digital experiences were fueled and i have started my api journey uh through consulting uh, company where i had my my former customer to choose the right api management solution to fit their needs and their business objectives and then i moved to there i would say the dark side of the force as a pre-sales uh, from ca and then Microsoft. i joined and i'm happy newly for two years now kate could you yes. tell us a few words about you Sure. So, uh, Harry, hello, everyone. My name is Kiet. Uh, as you can see, I have much more experience than uh, uh, Nicola because I don't have Twitter. I'm a kind of an old school developer. I don't know what Twitter is, so I just have the LinkedIn. Uh, so I started in the last century, uh, pretty much at Oracle France as a technical consultant, uh, working actually back to the time on the middleware uh, area already. And I had the chance by that time to, to meet with a couple of people at Oracle, uh, pretty senior. One one of the guy actually just moved to uh, Google recently to be the CEO of Google Cloud. So actually, I was part of his team as a product manager, especially focusing on the SOA aspect for EMEA and APAC. Uh, and actually, after a couple of years, I was like, hmm, uh, there was kind of a problem in the sense that yeah, the SOA. Uh, was kind of mature back to that time with all the stack, all the capabilities, but it was pretty difficult to land for our customer to 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 be able to empower uh, the SOA. So that's why I decided to move actually to the services team and create a, a SWAT team as part of the services team uh, to promote all the SOA methodology to our customers, etc. Uh, and then uh, Microsoft came. Uh, I was at Hong Kong at this moment, 2014, this was very at the beginning, and I was the first employee basically to start the Muse of Hong Kong business uh, back to 2014 uh, and just realized that, uh, yeah, I would say the technology landscape has changed and there are a lot of things that have changed 
in terms of uh, seeing uh, architecture or te technology in general. So yeah, this is my background and I just moved back to, to Paris uh, six months ago. Uh, so hopefully I can be more uh, helpful to the, to the business uh, in France. So this is pretty much my, my background. And I hand, hand it over back to you, Nicolas. Thank you, Kit. Uh, I think your, your experience uh, will be a very insightful for, for, for this today talk. Yep. Uh, yep, we know we are in a virtual event and most of you guys are looking for goodies and, and swag. So, yep. This one, the collector. Or this one, maybe you yeah. choose uh, for three of you guys. Just be attentive. By the end of the session, we will explain you how you could have some swag uh, delivered to your home directly. So stay tuned. Uh, maybe Kit would like a, a, a prior to start. Um, we choose this topic around ESB, IFAS, API management, microservices, REST or GraphQL APIs, a lot of buzzwords uh, and a lot of uh, misconception or uh, we want all to be aligned to understand uh, what's behind those buzzwords. And hey, maybe we would like to start with a tool, if you're OK with, with that, uh, and to see what's your understanding behind all those integration or connectivity uh, tools, platform. So please, if you just flash the QR code, and we'll see your answer for five quick questions. And then we'll dig uh, into those ones. Okay, everyone is already. Yes. So it's a product, it's a platform, it's an architecture. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's moving. Architecture it's part. moving. Yeah. Yeah, architecture I like this. Pattern. I like it too. <laughs> so. Tourist. Okay. Next. Now, what about. What about IPAS? Platform, yeah. Wow, interesting. Yeah, well, I, the, the P of the IPAS already is, is the platform, right? So this one is easy. I would say this is an easy question. <laughs> That's interesting. See that some it of is interesting. Like, uh, an architecture pattern related to IPAS. Could be seems, yep. seems, seems related to the ESB question. Move to the cloud managed infrastructure. API yep. management now. Mm, this one is tricky. Oh. We have experts in there. We have experts in the yeah. room. You see, I, I was right actually to set this this question. Actually, one of one of the answers, possible answers. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Impressed. Are your, are your answers? And this one is the last one about service mesh now. Right. Interesting. Interesting. Very interesting. interesting. So, okay. As I said, this is for us to get information about you and, and uh, what's your conception of those um, topics. Yes. And uh, what you can see uh, from the discussion we do have uh, with our peers, our customer, is that, yeah, uh, there's a lot of, of say, misconception around all those, those buzzwords, as we, we see in, in the pool, even if I saw a lot of experts in there. So we'll dig into this. Uh, but maybe, uh, Kiet, could you share? Yeah, so I will share a little bit. I, and also the rationale behind why we are yeah. asking those questions. I think this is this is very important. But before I actually like, jump into the conclusion of what I'm going to, to expose, I just want to, to step back a little bit, uh, back to the early, I would say, uh, 20s or the uh, beginning of the centuries to look at the SOA uh, why we get into the SOA and why we are getting to where, where we are right now. So uh, at the very beginning, I would say when, when everybody starts seeing integration as a key, I would say, major domain into the IT, before actually we talk about integrations, 
what organizations used to do is to, of course, they write applications, and then with the different applications, they somehow needs to exchange information together. And what they do is to use, well, point-to-point -point approach. I write code here and there, and then trying to uh, exchange data, exchange functions uh, across the different applications. And of course, as everybody knows, this is not a sustainable, it's not a scalable manner. And this is when, you know, when IT, when the internet becomes popular, when every organization uh, start having internet uh, access. Uh, then what happened is that uh, the industry was trying to figure out what is the best way actually to normalize this kind of integration. So next slide, please. Next slide. Okay, next slide. So I'm, I'm not talking about ETL or batch or whatever, which is very, I would say, data-centric data type of integrations based on uh, based on batch or really about, about moving data around. Now, when we talk about integrations, I want to focus more on the more real-time type of integrations. And back to the time, a lot of people actually come up with an idea of what we call the SOA. So service-oriented architecture. So service-oriented architecture, the baseline is really to, uh, to say, okay, we have uh, now the protocol called SOAP protocol, web services, everybody knows about it. Uh, then we started with a service bus. So the role of the service bus is basically to open up all the backend systems and basically having a unified way to inter interact with those systems. Uh, some of the systems that we cannot use a service bus, we use the messaging. Uh, but ultimately, what we're exposing are just the, uh, I would say, the atomic functions. When we need to compose new functions, what we need is the process orchestration on the top. So when we talk about the SOA in general, it's not about product. It's more about a reference architecture or a best of breed a stack of technologies where we put together and we create reference architecture. So what we say to the customer is to say, well, this is what you need to have. Uh, in order, this is the right architecture that you need to have in order to be able to be agile to create new functions by leveraging the existing, etc. But the downside with this kind of model, with this kind of reference architecture, is that it will impose a very rigid or a very, uh, 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 how to say that, uh, yeah, rigid, not very agile governance model in the sense that in order to make all those pieces work, together in a coherent manner, we need to have what we call a COE, Center for, uh, uh, of Excellence, to basically control uh, the different different teams, the ESB developers, the process developer, or the messaging developers on what they need to build, on how they need to build it, so that in an enterprise architecture level, everything will work together. So we impose a very uh, uh, time-consuming uh, governance model to do that. And every changes that we make into the, the architecture will require a lot of testing because every change in the ESB might impact the other pieces. So this is where uh, the reason why we don't see, to be frank, a lot of successful use case around the SOA, even though we kind of know that it's the way to go, but there's something which is missing. But doesn't matter, organizations went into it, some of them are using it, which is fine. They managed to stabilize it but they start realizing that it's not agile enough, okay? So this is the first problem that we start seeing with the SOA, but so far it was okay. Now, what happened is that the clouds come into the picture. Organizations trying to basically uh, offload this data center, they want to move their stack uh, from their own data center to move to the cloud to use you know, Amazon or Azure or this kind of elastic uh, computing power, but they realize that if I just move my SOA stack as it, into the cloud is going to consume a lot of resources because they're extremely heavy. I mean, uh, back to my time, you install a service bus without doing anything. You just start the instance running idle in an idle way. It's already taking you 1.4 gig of memory uh, and it's taking you 30% uh, of CPU without doing anything, right? So this was the reality and it's not, it's not cost effective actually to move the SOA stack as it into the cloud. So what happened is that organizations start trying to go back either to the P2P mode, point-to-point -point mode, trying to integrate uh, the, the cloud applications they are building with the SOA stack, or what they're trying to do. Next slide, please. 
is to use new technologies, new um, um, methods like uh, microservices, right? You have different way in the different clouds actually to write code, serverless code, to do the integration uh, between the different different stacks. So all of a sudden, of course, this is working, but we're introducing a new technology, which means that we are also introducing a new governance model and a new operational model. But so far, it's still okay. Now that the cloud and on-prem is kind of stabilized, what people want to do is now, okay, digital transformations, what we want to do is the B2B, B2C, to go outside to actually open up my uh, technical capabilities to the external world to work in a better way with my partners, to work in a better way with my customers. So what happened is that I start exposing all those functions, either to my mo to the old mobile applications, either to my partners. And as you can imagine, again, we have another problem. And what the industry come up as a solution is, next slide, please. It's basically to say what you need is the API management. Because now that the way you integrate with your partner and the customers are, are going to explode. You need a way to manage the access and also to secure the access from uh, the, the external traffic. But yes, this can help. This can then definitely help. I mean, the API management is something that we need to expose your capability to the outside world, uh, et cetera, and to put the security. But the problem is the security just stop uh, at the API management level, when you go down within your API manager, basically you're just back to your existing stack. The security, it is what it is, uh, but knowing that the cybersecurity attack most likely is not coming from the outside, it's coming from the inside. Basically, we are still having a lot of doors open. We are not fully secure by itself. We can introduce service mesh, we can introduce whatever technologies that we have, but we still have pretty much the same problem. Then the next, uh, the next logo, the last one I promise, is that the other buzzword, the IPAS. Now, yes, organizations, because they are open up, uh, opening up to the partner, to customers, and also there are so many cloud-based applications out there that they are using, the SaaS applications that they're using, they need to integrate with the existing stack, whatever, but because the SOA was not really designed to run on the cloud, so what we will do is that we will use the IPAS, another technical stack, to integrate all those things together. Okay. Now this slide sounds like complicated from everybody's mind, but somehow this is a pretty much the reference architecture that people are, are adopting. And this is what I'm seeing as well. And what happened is that uh, this is just the beginning because there are also a lot of new technologies coming into the picture. GraphQL, Service Mesh that I mentioned early on, and this will actually complete the reference architecture. It is what it is, which is fine. But when we step back, and when we step back in the sense that look at what digital transformation means. Digital transformation is to say that I want to use the technologies to basically transform my business. To transform my business is basically to say that I, I want to change my business model pretty much on the fly. In a sense that suppose that I'm, uh, let's suppose that I'm a factory, I have a production line, I'm building cars, but all of a sudden because of the cars is not more popular, I need to change my production lines because I need to, I want to build aircraft or whatever. All my production lines, uh, basically I, I need to rethink it again. Now what we are doing with this kind of reference architecture, we are pretty much in the same situations. We are using an academic technology stack architecture, thinking about, okay, those are the collection of technical capabilities that you need to have to bundle as part of architecture to drive your innovation. But the problem is the innovation by itself and by definition is basically, I just don't know what will happen next. If I have a so academic, so rigid reference architecture, is not sure. I'm not sure that I will be able to iterate. And this is basically what we are seeing. Now we are seeing a lot of organizations who start trying to build the API strategy on the existing SOA stack with API management, but they don't get the outcome that they expect. The reason is not because they don't have the right technical capability. The reason is because the governance model and the operational model is not aligned with all the different technical stack that we're using. If you remember about the survey that I, I just did earlier, for the ESB, uh, you, you add the 
most answer was an uh, architecture pattern. For the APIM, it's about a set of collection and practice. About the iPass, is a platform. About service mesh, it was a product. What we're talking, we're basically talking about different things. We are mixing matching practice, platform, product together, putting in some short of reference architecture, and we expect that this is going to work. And this is the challenge. This is really the challenge that organization is facing. And this is where I think, from a Microsoft perspective, we have a response to provide. And on this, I will pass it back to, to Nicholas for the, for the following. Okay, thank you, Kit, uh, for, for this interesting, uh, those interesting insights on the state of most of our peers and, and, and customer architecture. So as you said, this is the new bottleneck. This is where we're starting from uh, as Microsoft to have this more holistic view of connectivity at the enter enterprise scale, saying, okay, what's the business capability do I need? What are the digital channel do I need to fuel? Where does my data reside uh, in a more complex hybrid architecture? So that, that's our mission. Uh, and, and we will explain how, what's our proposition around that, how we could help you to connect the dots, but to stay in a govern, uh, agile, secure framework. Uh, so a few words uh, about uh, just sharing about, about new soft. Uh, so we were born in 2006. Uh, we were on, on 2012, the first IPAS solution uh, with the launch of Cloud Hub. Uh, and in 2013, uh, we launched AnyPoint platform. This one unified platform uh, to help you give you the tools to address any kind of uh, connectivity use case. Should be synchronous, asynchronous, uh, or should be HTTP payloads, events, uh, or, or other uh, integration uh, use cases. So let's dig into it, if you're okay with that. Um, what we would like to introduce as the answer uh, of this new bottleneck that Kit uh, just shared with you earlier, uh, this mix and matching of several integration connectivity stacks, each one having its own repository, its own governance model, its own skills also for the enterprise, because it's another point. <laughs> we, we, we also have to think about the project and time to delivery, which is more and more complex when you have to align several teams, each one responsible for one part of the overall stack. Uh, so let me introduce three things uh, we'd like to share today with you, uh, with Nilsat. The, the first one is the answer around the architecture model. Uh, so we extended the SOA approach in terms of reuse, think about consumption and not just exposing assets, uh, and how we could help you to construct, to build a very agile and, and scalable architecture. And uh, then, yeah, the platform to handle it. And the, the third point uh, is, as you mentioned, Kate, is also around governance people. This point is also critical uh, if you want uh, to succeed uh, in your connectivity uh, issues. Uh, so what are we doing? Um, first point, we're all to today talking about APIs. Uh, let's share with you what for us should be a modern API. Uh, this API should be a combination of three aspects. So the first one is the connectivity. Uh, and the data is coming from some system. So we should be able to very easily uh, build an API on, on top of it. Should be a very legacy uh, system as uh, flat files, uh, relational databases, or more modern uh, system like uh, message broker, should be SaaS apps, etc. So like a combination of integration platform slash IPaaS, depending on where the, the system resides, should be on-premise or cloud. Then you will need uh, to thread, to process, to transform this data uh, for some technical logic. Should you implement some routing capabilities, orchestration, transform flow, uh, do some synchronous to asynchronous patterns, uh, split ability to implement, I would say, your orchestration or choreography patterns. And then the last stack as any service, as any API uh, centric, you should have this contract between you uh, as the service provider and your consumer through the new standards. Uh, as you know, 
OAS or RAML. Uh, and, and in there, you will be also able in the API contract to, I would say, enforce all the API management management related uh, rule sets. I mean, from technical uh, rules uh, like quota enforcement, uh, SLA in terms of response time, etc., but also from a business rule at some point, and in there enforce and apply uh, and promote your API through some uh, business um, model, depending on on, the, on your APIs, monetize your API through through this layer. Uh, Okay, those three components are deployed, should be running uh, in a hybrid runtime, should be seen as a container. So the idea is there is not to get back to what you, you just introduced, Kate, or reminds us about the monolithic integration platform, saying you should put all your flows, all your APIs, all your integration flows in the same platform. And, and in there, the idea is to get, okay, this uh, API should be uh, standalone in terms of this life cycle. So it should run in, in its own runtime, like any today we are putting in a microservices approach, but this kind of distributed, but also hybrid uh, API landscape should be managed and secured and, and referenced in a single pane of glass we'll introduce to you. Um, okay, so we just introduced what, what, what an API is. Uh, should uh, offer to you in terms of um, functionality and how we put it in the architecture uh, standpoint. This is what we have here in terms of the API-led connectivity. This is this uh, three-layered approach of the architecture. Um, so introducing to you the idea first is why we are doing this. Uh, like you say, Piet, what are the business capabilities we want to provide? So we'll start with the top of the slide in there and see, okay, uh, what the experience I want to offer. So transforming the business requirement to an API, that's the goal of the experience API. I mean, building a service which fits exactly to the business needs and also to the technical constraints in terms of uh, flows, security, etc and not uh, relying on, the, I would say, an omni-channel API, on a single API delivering all the several channels of the company. Uh, I saw many times this uh, issue where you started to make an API as generic as possible. The first project is coming, a second one saying, okay, I need you to evolve this API and need some attributes that are not exposed today. So I need to get to a V2 of the API. And a third project is coming and say, okay, my mobile app, I have issue. You have to change uh, the case of your attribute within your APIs and so on. So uh, by the time having trying to build this one single APIs, once APIs fits all use case, is becoming more and more complex and is getting like a uh, monolithic API with a lot of if this is if it's this uh, channel, then deliver the information through this format and so on. So the idea yeah, with the experience API, uh, it, it, it fits exactly the business need and the technical contract of a, a specific uh, channel. Okay, uh, I said this, but uh, I don't have the access to the data as of now, only with the experience API. So that's where the system API came into the table. Uh, the goal in there is to help you unlock all the, your siloed uh, data system should be them within your on-premise system, within your uh, private cloud instances or your services you're using. So in there, the idea is, yeah, unlock those, integrate, connect those uh, data system, put some um, homogenization over there saying, okay, if I need in my company to get access to all data through REST, JSON, uh, uh, APIs with a level two of uh, maturity, just enforcing there. Uh, and because we are not segregating the connectivity, also the logic and the security, uh, I mean, also uh, as the time you're exposing the system, you will be able to, uh, by nature, natively to secure it. I mean, for instance, in there, I will expose my SAP. I know it's it's running in a in a in, with a not infinite uh, capacity. So in there, I will be able to enforce it, saying okay. And never mind the number of applications, number of users. It will be restricted to, I don't know, 300 calls per second. 
uh, when I expose it through a system API. And, and then the uh, middle, uh, middle rail layer, I would say, like yet, if you're okay with that, the yes. process API slash business, I would say it's, it's where you will implement a uh, lot of, of your functional uh, rules uh, in there, uh, your processes, your business objects, and this is where the the, the magic from reuse uh, will come from, uh, and where your experience API will just pick up like uh, Lego blocks what you need uh, for your project. So this is our what, but uh, this is our approach, uh, the API led connectivity, uh, as you can see. So. Bring agility to the uh, to the project. They will be able to very easily build the experience API just using the process API in there, and and, and helping you to scale. Uh, system could change. You're not breaking anything. And as you can see in there, just just a logical uh, architecture. The idea in there is each component you see in the architecture uh, could implement any kind of of uh, imp implementation, any kind of architecture pattern should be synchronous, asynchronous, should be messages oriented, events oriented, or, or real time APIs. Ted, do you have any other so, stuff to share on the API led connectivity, maybe from yeah. a security standpoint? Yes, I think that API led connectivity, just to recap what uh, Nicola just mentioned, is, is really, if you want to see it, is more a design pattern by itself. It's, it's not about technologies, not about where you deploy, etc. It's, it's more a way for us to segment the functions and logic into the different places. So from what we are seeing when we are getting into a digital transformations uh, uh, standpoint, basically what we see in terms of functional is that you need to do the function, uh, separate functions based on the context, the business context is being used. You need to separate the functions that are the value added functions that, that can be reused across different business contexts. And also another one is those are the business functions uh, that are used to expose all the canonical data and functions that you're having from your, your data center. So it's a, real, it's a real compositions of all those functions that you need to be able to, uh, of course, monitor, but to compose uh, over the time. And the reason why we do the API-led connectivity is not just because we, we want to do it this way, is because uh, if you think about what I just mentioned earlier on, when we tend to use API management as a security layer, as a perimeter layer for us to secure incoming traffic, what happens is that once the traffic is behind the API manager or the API gateway by itself, basically we are kind of, uh, we need to think across, let's hope that there's no persons internally was able to hack what, what is going on. From outside, once we have this kind of modern API, which you can take it as a microservice, each of the modern API itself has the micro gateways already bundled inside, which means that I can enforce the security directly into the endpoint itself based on the business context in which is is being used. And this is totally aligned to the zero trust security paradigm that you can find a lot from the internet, which is uh, how to make sure that and basically what we're saying in the zero trust security model is that we cannot trust any actor system applications or perimeter anymore. We need to enforce the security in every single interactions when we need. And with the model that we are proposing, we are basically zero trust ready natively because each of the APIs that you are using, I can directly enforce all the security uh, policy insights independently if my API is deployed on the cloud, uh, on, on Perm, uh, in your private pass or wherever. It doesn't really matter. Okay. So this is really the, the, the vision of MuleSoft, I would say, and the vision of API in our world. Thank you, Kat. Uh, yes. Yeah, very interesting. So, um, okay, this is for, for the approach. Please, if you have any question, we we get back to, to this later on. Uh, share it on on, on the, the chat. Uh, okay, so we we talk about an architecture approach, but how to power it? So the technology uh, we offer to you uh, at, at Newsoft is providing you a platform, a unified platform 
to uh, provide this architecture. Uh, it's name is any platform. So the idea is to get, as you, you, you said, get in a single platform integration in API management, not siloed, but in a single unit, saying that any flow, any integration, any endpoint I will expose in my IS should be managed. I mean, anyone should be able, even if in the first step, this is not just a land to land consumption, uh, but we will be able to put some, some policy on, on it. Um, and, and in a, as you said, in a hybrid fashion, uh, should uh, your API reside on your uh, own system, on your private cloud instances, or even if you, you want it, uh, the runtime I shared with you earlier could be also deployed within our IPaaS, name is, is Clouded. And, and getting this ability to implement depending on the connector, the accelerator, I would say, we will provide it to you uh, as Mulesoft. And the kind of implementation you will do within those runtime implement any kind of integration patterns. As you can see on the top right of the slide, we shared a few ones in there. I see uh, some question around async APIs uh, on the chat. So yes, this is a pattern uh, we, we support. Uh, we are part of the uh, RFC. We are building the RFC with the AC async API teams. Uh, and as you can see there, service mesh, ESB, all is around connectivity use cases. And, and we provide one unified platform to manage all uh, of those uh, through all their life cycle from the design time uh, to the deployment, promotion, reference, secure test, etc. So that's the idea of the any point platform. Uh, so first point that we are only one product. We are not giving you several products depending on the use cases. I think you, you understood. And, and so you have those two, I would say, main components within the platform, your runtime, hosting, doing the integration, host exposing your API security. So this is a kind of the, of the runtime layer uh, in a hybrid and distributed fashion. And on top of that, you have the control plane, and the SaaS, uh, by default, a SaaS platform, helping you to manage all the lifecycle, reference all uh, your, your connectivity assets. Once again, should be ESB, I uh, would say services, APIs, should be uh, referencing your topics from your uh, event broker messages, uh, your data model also. It is an interesting point when you are talking about uh, SOA, what are the, the data model and, and so on. And yep, just to get you an insight about uh, the, what all today we named the full API lifecycle management. Uh, another point, one other uh, benefit of getting a one single unified platform, so managing it. We are talking about the same platform from designing your OAS files uh, to implementing the API, getting access to the data source. We are not talking about just proxify uh system but apis but really implement them and then operate them uh, at scale third point be, mm, just prior giving you the hand yet is around organization uh if you're okay with that and how we could yeah. also evolve uh the coe you mentioned in the soa era uh where at that time all projects should get to them uh share the specs and follow i would say their guideline their principle and and get their approval to get the project done and that was one of the pain points also of the soa you you shared about the governance model is that this is the also a bottleneck at that time uh, when you are the enterprise scale of getting all your projects uh, approved or going through the same instance the same coe so um at, at this and all this connectivity use case, what we want to share today is how we could evolve the CRE into a more uh, outbound sharing uh, of, of between the, the, the enterprise. Uh, so we name it a center for enablement. So the emphasis is on the enablement. It's not on the expertise. I mean, how we could help all the lab IT, the, your IT, and, 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 and the business uh, to talk uh, each other and, and being aligned on the architecture, on the use case, on the best practices in terms of use case, on reusing uh, and, and 
thinking about this construction model, construction production model. Yet, you would like to add something about uh, the C4A? Or could we go on? Yes. I think that the biggest difference, I think, yes, another acronym, C4E, uh, and in the SOA, we used to have what we call the COE. Um, just, just, just to explain that, based on my experience, you know, as a SOA governance architect uh, for different organizations in my previous company, COE is more inbound organizations, I would say, it, where it's organizations where we centralize all the requirements from the business, from the infra, from wherever, uh, within the organizations and we will use those information and the COE will establish the different policy and different guidelines to all the different teams. Uh, so yes, the, the reference architecture itself is great. We'll be able somehow to do the reuse, but the COE itself becomes a bottleneck. The bottleneck in, in the sense that because just a few people will make the decisions. I, it happens a lot of time that we spend three months just to agree on the WSDL interface that we want to expose. So this is the reality. Now the C4 is different in the sense that we don't want to go back into the cycle. What we want is to make sure that we empower all the teams across the organizations to do whatever they want. But the C4E is more, in this in this case, the, C4, the C4 is more outbound organizations where this role is to capture what the other teams has created, identify what is good, what is best, and what can be reused, and then promote back to all the different teams. So it's a little bit different, and this is how, from a Mules of perspective, with the different practice, and we have a lot of tools, we have what we call catalyst, some practice in place where we help organizations actually to submit what they have done, and then internally, we just aggregate that and republish all the best practice back to the team. And we just want to make sure that all the teams work efficiently on their own. Yeah. Thank you, Kat. Uh, maybe you could now share with us. Yes. You could yes. I, I do it. Uh, actually, there are a lot of questions right now on the chat, and I'm in the middle of one uh, to answer one, but I will come back later on. If you want, you can you can take them over. Yeah, I, I'm taking uh, in it. In the meanwhile, I, I just share my screen and we have seven minutes to do that demo so i will go pretty quickly uh, can you see my screen yeah we can yes so basically uh well news of what it is as uh, nicholas mentioned early on is uh, we have a platform an important platform and the intent is not just to provide a set of technologies but we are providing a set of technologies with a unified governance framework independently of the integration patterns that you want to implement. Either it's IPaaS, either it's API, either it's ETL, either it's whatever you want. As long as you want to connect to the source, connect to the target and put some logic in between, we can do it. So this is pretty much what Musab is doing. So, but in this demo, what I want is not to focus on the development part. Developing is easy. In the worst case, you, you hire some developers who knows how to write code. You can always create a, a an API or a flow just writing code. This is not important. What is important is one, you have all those assets together, how you make a sense out of it and how you make sure that you operate in the way you want to operate, okay? So that's why I don't focus on the technical part, I will focus on, on operation. So as a starting point in this case, let's assume that I have a couple of APIs already pre-built. All those API are being built based on the API-led connectivity paradigms. For the moment, don't, don't focus too much on that. Uh, just know that with this, I have uh, eight APIs already uh, implemented and also deployed into the environment. Based on those eight, I have three system APIs, I have two process API, and I have uh, three experience API. But what 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 do they mean? So let's focus on the system API first. So let's suppose that I have a, a SAP instance somehow, and from this SAP, I need to expose some customer information. So with and upon platform, you'll be able to create an API using OAS, using RAML to define interface. We create an API skeleton, and then from, from which you can start composing the API. So this API will look like this. You create your interface, uh, your JSON uh, input or whatever, and then once you get into the Endpoint platform, you can select based on the connectors that you have. Let's suppose that I want to call SAP. With the SAP, I have the different functions. What I can do is just struck and drop uh, the SAP functions that I want to call. And for instance, I'm going to call a puppy functions and based on the input, uh, the output of this request, I just map it out 
into the into the output that I want based on my API. Very easy. It's basically local. What you do is just to generate the API, select the connectors that you need, drag and drop the field, and then your API is ready. And when you do this, this API not only it has the implementation capabilities, also having the API security capabilities where you can inject policies by itself. And you don't need a separate gateway or a separate server to do that. It's already bundled into that, your application. And if I, if I take another example, uh, which is uh, for, to get another information about the banking information, with this banking information, the same thing, I call another puppy drag and drop with this function. But it so happened that in this uh, API, actually I have a separate task. I have a separate task, which is basically synchronizing my banking information into an in-house database, okay? So in the reference architecture jargon, this is going to be somehow some IPAS flow because it's not directly related to the API. Uh, so I will use another tool, but for us, again, it's the same thing. So what you can do is, I can package the same flow into the same API, which role is, is not about being called by the API, but basically it's from a scheduler. Once the same scheduler is being executed, I will actually prepare some of the requests. Based on the request, I will get the information from SAP. And then once I have the information in SAP, I just write into the database and then I close the loop. Okay, so this is back to one of the uh, questions that I had on the chat. If what do I do if actually I have multiple uh, functions or data that are being served with in different integration platform? Uh, in our world, in a uh, system API, for example, do I package all of them together? Yes, I package them all together. Because with this system API, not only I have the technical capability, but I'm packaging the domain design model directly within the system API. So all the subscription, uh, subsequent tests uh, across the platform can be done pretty pretty easily, right? So those are just the two example of the API. Now I have those system API, process API, experience API, or deploy uh, is great, but in here is pretty flat. Doesn't mean a lot of things. What is the benefit of doing this with any point platform? The benefit is once you have all those API created and deployed into the platform all the interactions across all the different APIs that I'm talking about, down to the backend systems and up to the application, which is being used to call the experience API, all those interactions are dynamically extracted by the platform. Okay, very important. The interactions, the dependencies are dynamically extracted by the platform. You don't need, the developer do not need to do any kind of documentations like in the SOA, uh, error, right? Uh, so yeah. this is really critical because you 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 will never be uh, actually get into the situations where you have a wrong information and to make the, the, the bad decisions. Right now, everything is being tracked directly within the platform. Okay, so you have all this map automatically generated. Based on this, those API you can expand. For example, to another use case, you can build up okay, this is to get a customer 360, but why not creating, let's say, a prospecting API on the top of it, reusing the same APIs, or actually using uh, the B2B uh, to C type of model to expose to the external business partner. So all these kind of things you can manage direct, directly within the platform. And most importantly, you can check the security dependencies from an end-to-end -end perspective. So from an InfoSec team, for example, you can know, let's suppose that I have some rules saying that all the APIs must have client ID enforcement and also the JSON threat protection. You just take these two policy and you can see if all the APIs that you're having are completely aligned. So all of this, if you have to do it, build it by yourself using a reference architecture with different type of products, you would not be able to do this. With the AnyPoint platforms, once you create a modern API with, of course, all the capabilities, all this kind of non-functional uh, uh, features are rebundled really within the platform. Uh, I'm so sorry. I think I have to stop here just to be fair with the other presenter because we are kind of uh, running out of time. 
Uh, what I suggest is that uh, there will be other uh, breakout sessions. Uh, I think next uh, is today and on Thursday, myself and Nicholas will be around. So don't hesitate to, to come back to us and to ask your, your questions. And in the meanwhile, I will make a copy of all the questions that we already have, and uh, we will respond to you directly based on that. Yeah, maybe two words to, to, to finish on that. Thank you very much, Kiet. Thank you very much. I don't know if you could see my screen. I would like just to share out to get swag. <laughs> oh, yes. Some of you guys ask, ask me. Uh, OK, I can see it. Um, so uh, yep, we, uh, we would like to share with you some swag uh, for if you've been uh, uh, aware of what we shared. Uh, this is the steps you must follow to get those. Uh, so we'll share for three of you guys 30 pounds a gift a voucher on our swag store just answer a quick question around how we name our new architecture approach very easy one and you also have to get a secret password password from our booth uh, the mulesoft booth uh, which will be open uh, by tomorrow and wednesday and then get back to us through a dm or, or email and and then you will send uh, the voucher uh, happy to, for some of you, uh, answer your question directly uh, on the remaining time. Uh, we'll we get, keep connected in there. Uh, thank yeah. you for your attention uh, and have a great event here in Happy Day Paris. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I think we can we can stay here a little bit. I don't know if yep. the yep. more <laughs> we can. people who want to ask questions. We can we can answer from here. Just post it on the Slack or Slack on the chat. Um, Thank you, Maurizio. I'm looking at if there is some question we didn't answer. Thank you. Uh, I think there are a lot of, I think you answered the others already. There's one I, actually around around Kafka. Uh, actually, it's a very generic question. It's, it's, not, it's not product related. It's, it's really depending on the organization and the security principles they have in place. I saw one and so on. This one, yeah. Yeah. The transaction rollback. All these are related to the best practice of implementation. And how we handle uh, error, basically. Yes, we do. Well, we handle transaction. So the, 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 the XA transaction we can handle within within our, uh, our flow itself. Also, so combined with the exception handling, we can do compensations and rollback all together. I don't know if you could give the hand to some uh, of yeah. the audience if they want to speak and share directly. Yeah. Sure we can't. Uh, could ask to the moderator or some of the guys who want to raise the hand on the chat mm -hmm. if you want to have a discussion with us. Or perhaps the moderator won't want us to leave. <laughs> And once I'm not disconnected by the moderator, I'm still yes. I am still yeah, there. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Because I can see we're still 45, 45 people, so yeah, still forty. Okay, maybe yeah, uh, that we could close. Okay. I didn't. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank bye you, bye. everyone. Thank Have you. Have a nice day. Bye. Take care of you.